a bit of a swig of whiskey, uh, whiskey, take a swig of whiskey, yeah, that'd, that'd be a really good idea, man. Well done. Swig of water, because that, um, that spirit of vein was um, a bit peaty than I thought it was going to be. Um, <clears throat> I deliberately had that first, because I didn't think that was anywhere near as peated as what I'm supposed to be having next, which is actually labelled peated, so um, caught me a bit off guard. Right, so, we've just done Swedish, which was Spirit of Wien, um, and now we are going to go um, across the strait and go into Denmark, and we're going to go to um, a, what was a, what started off as a brewery and is now also a micro distillery called Brownstein, and it is based here, which is uh, in a town called... <sighs> I apologise to Danes and Scandinavians out there, but it, I'm assuming it's called Kurg. Um, it's just down the coast from Copenhagen, and it's K-O-G-E, but the O has got that line through it, which I've no idea how you pronounce it. So, um, it was a brewery that in the early 2000s started um, distilling, and distilling gin and vodka, and started distilling whiskey as well. Now, it's two brothers that own it, the Brownsteins. It's Klaus and Michael, and supposedly, this is what I read, whether this is true or not, but they decided that they wanted to start distilling, and distilling whiskey in particular, after going to a fly fishing trip to Scotland, and uh, at the sort of the turn of the millennium. Um, whether that's true or not, I don't know, but that was what I read, and apparently they purchased equipment from a distillery in Baltimore, uh, in America, and brought it over in order to start distilling. So um, what we have here is one called Daniken, and when they started off, they started off with a couple of limited editions and a cast strength, but they now have this range called Danica, um, which they have two versions of. There is an unpeated, which is matured in sherry and bourbon casks, and then a peated version, which is the one I have here, which is matured in just bourbon casks, and it looks like this. And um, this was one where, um, at the Whiskey Festival in the first session, so it was a session from 11 till three, and then there was an hour break, and then it was four to late. And halfway through the first session, these three Geordies turn up, and one of them is like proper, proper Geordie in terms of bald, big guy, could barely understand what he was saying, and I lived in, um, Newcastle, I nearly called it Geordie Land then. I lived in Newcastle, in the centre of Newcastle for uh, seven years because I went up there for university. So I speak pretty good Geordie and this guy was like hardcore Geordie. The sort of guy that you would expect on the terraces at St James's Park with his shirt off and something painted on his tummy. Uh, and him and his th two mates loved this. Kept coming back for other samples. Basically got to the end of the session and we kept coming back saying, you know, there was a little bit left in the bottle and it was like, oh, can we finish it off type of thing. Um, I could have just given the bottle and three straws and they would have been happy. They absolutely love this stuff. So when it was a case of in the break being able to sort of snap some samples, it was, do I go for the unpeated? Do I go for the peated? And to be honest, the peated was the one that everybody was really, really going for. So that's why I've got this. Now, they are, um, as much as they can be organic, um, they try and source everything as locally as possible, or they do source their water from Greenland um, because it's it's as pure as they can get hold of. So it's another one of these, as with Spirit of Veen, um, yeah, and a lot of these kind of Scandinavian and um, sort of Central European distilleries that I'm starting to find is it's micro distilleries, but it's locally sourced. There's a lot of care taken over. They're really thinking about what they're doing, and they're trying to... It's, it's not mass produced. It's, it's really, really refreshing to see in that it's not mass produced. It's trying to find an identity and it's trying not to emulate Scotch or bourbon or Irish. They're trying to get their own, their own vision out there and the, the, whether it's marketing or whether it's the actual spirit itself, they're trying to do things slightly differently and not necessarily, you know, a lot of these that I'm coming across now, these newer ones, are not aged you know, they're not 10 year olds, they don't have age statements on them, but they're deliberately not 10 year olds, they're holding up as their own as a three or four or five year old. And I think Danica is about four to five from what we could find out. Um, but if it's good enough, it doesn't need to be aged any longer. And if you can sell it earlier and you know you've got a quality product, why not get it out there as a five year old? If it tastes great and you're happy with it, why wait another five years? Why sit on an investment for five years if you can get your money out of it straight away? Now, I believe this is available on travel retail as well. 
Um, so I think there's a better chance of getting this than there is something like Spirit of the Veen. And I think it's also um, the production is, is there is a bit more out there as well. So on the nose, this is more obviously peated. Spirit of Veen surprised me because it was sweet and there was um, grassiness to it, but the peatiness came through on the palate. This is there straight away, but it's a very clean smoke. There's a, uh, now this is 42%, whereas Veen was 45, and yet this smells, this, this has a nose of having a higher alcohol percentage because it's cleaner, so it kind of hits you a bit more. There's, there's not the sweetness that the other one had, but there is a freshness to it, but it's almost a citrusy freshness as well as the iodine-y. It's less of a smoke and more of an iodine peatiness there. Still gentle, still not like massively, but it's definitely it's obvious. But there is a really nice sort of citrusy edge to it as well. Mmm, pleasant. Now there's not a huge amount of depth to it. It's, it starts off quite thin. It sort of goes into your mouth and there's not really much of a richness there. It doesn't coat your mouth, it kind of sits and it's quite level. But then the medicinal flavors start to kick in. Again, it's not a, it's not a smoke smokiness. It's a, yeah, it's, it's, it's um, medicinal, it's hospitals, it's iodine. The citrus is still there as well, and if anything, it's lifting it up slightly. There is a nice, gentle kind of lemon zestiness to it, which is actually really pleasant. It's just quite light. Um, there's not a great deal of depth to it or density. Um, it kind of sits on top of your tongue. It doesn't coat your mouth. Um, the sides of the sides of my palate aren't really getting much at all. It's a decent whiskey. It's not, it's not got a huge amount to it. That's the only problem. But for some people that's not necessarily a problem because some people prefer, prefer lighter whiskies. They don't want anything that's, that's too full on or, or too heavy. And this is anything but heavy. It's light, it's, I wouldn't say it's refreshing, but it's, it's got a delicacy to it that for, pe for people that like peated whiskies is it's on the lighter side. So it's, it's more of a, if you drink peated whiskies, this is more of a summer peated whiskey, shall we say. It's very pleasant. It's very, very easy to drink. I'd probably prefer the Fiend just because I had a little bit more depth to it, but I'm liking the citrusy edge on this. doesn't taste as peated as the Veen did, but I think that's probably because this is lighter and more delicate. Again, it's another good introduction to peated whiskey. In fact, if anything, I would probably say that this is a better introduction for somebody that really isn't sure if they're going to like peated. They're absolutely new to, to whiskey as a whole, and they want to try an Isla whiskey, or they want to try a peated whiskey, but they're not entirely sure. And this has the delicacy that it's not really going to put too many people off. You know, if you don't like that, you're not going to like any other peated whiskey at all. But it's much more delicate. It's, I would say definitely like a summer peated whiskey. Um, would probably go quite well in cocktails, but I, I'm not a fan of whiskey cocktails anyway. I'd rather drink whiskey on its own. Um, but uh, yeah, it's pleasant. It's very, very pleasant indeed. I think in travel retail this is going for about 50 to 60 euros. Again, it's small quantities, it's hard to get hold of. Um, but I think if I found that for say 30 quid, which 50 euros, that's more about 40 quid at the current exchange rate. If I found that for about 30 quid, I'd be very, very interested in that. And I think that would probably hold its own. Um, 40 quid, 50 quid, probably pushing a little bit. And to be honest, if you found it in the UK, it would probably be even more than that, simply because you've got to get it shipped over here anyway. But it's a delicate whiskey, and it's a delicate peated whiskey, and there aren't that many of those, because most peated whiskeys tend to go the other way and just kind of like go, right, we've got peated whiskey, we're gonna go for a peated whiskey. So, interesting, um, like it, not a bad whiskey at all, very, very good indeed, and, and yet another one that otherwise I would never have even come across this in my life. 
So always interesting to try new things. If you can find Danica, um, give it a go. It's well worth a go. From what I gather, the peated version definitely has the edge because I get the impression that the unpeated version is probably as light and as delicate as that, but doesn't have that peated element to kind of lift it up. So I think it's a little bit wishy-washy. Um, but yeah, definitely worth a go. Uh, yay on that one. Um, I don't do ratings, obviously. It's probably a bit late for me to start doing ratings, seeing as this will be number 69. Um, and I can't be bothered with scores and everything because it's totally subjective. So I might start scoring in terms of a yay or a nay or a maybe. Um, but that, yeah, I think that's a yay, as was the uh, being beforehand. So yeah, a whole new scoring system for you. There you go. It's not like, well, I've got another 300 to go, so I might as well start something now uh, because it will become habit. Uh, right, I shall see you at the next one. Cheers. Mm -hmm.